if we choose to connect with the stars, the stars can help connect us. Now that Matariki is officially a national holiday, it's important to understand that it's for all of us to celebrate. So what is Matariki? Why is it significant? And how can we all celebrate it? When I think about the new year, the thing that connects us to the rest of the world is it's the signal to tell us it's now time to recalibrate, to refresh. Matariki is one out of the many things people don't know about Te Ao Māori. Celebrating Matariki as a national holiday excites me. This is a positive outlook and pathway we can go into learning more. So what is Matariki? Or who is Matariki? Matariki is a star cluster that rises in midwinter. Because of the season change and their deep connection to the environment, many Māori saw the rising of Matariki as a sign of the new year. So where is Matariki? The best time to see the star cluster is just before sunrise. In Aotearoa, Matariki is northeast. First look east to the line of three stars that make up Orion's belt, or Tautoru. Then, follow the direction of Tautoru to the left until you see a tiny cluster of stars. This is Matariki. Matariki can be seen from all around the world. The Middle East, Asia, Australia, Europe, North and South America. Different cultures have their own names and stories attached to the cluster. Across Europe, Matariki is known as Pleiades. Some refer to them as the Seven Sisters. Some associate Matariki with death and mourning, while some connect the stars to agriculture. In Japan, Matariki is known as Subaru, which means gathering together. Many people around the world have been guided by stars, from astrology to ocean navigation and measuring time. Since ancient times, people have looked to stars as signs to connect them with events here on Earth. Christians believe the Star of Bethlehem was a miraculous sign to mark the birth of Christ. The Bible says, there will be signs in the sun, moon and stars on the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. Many cultures believed that the positions of the stars were their creator's way of telling stories. So it seemed only natural to recognize patterns in the sky, give them names, and tell stories about them. So what's our story here in Aotearoa? The word Matariki is often referred to as the eyes of God. Mata meaning eyes and Ariki meaning God. Many Māori believe when they pass on, our spirits ascend to the sky and we become stars. Some consider Matariki to be the mother star surrounded by her children. Some say she has six children. Some say she has eight. Each star is connected to our environment. Waiti and Waita are the stars watching over our water and all the kai that live within it. One for the fresh water like our rivers and lakes, and the other for our oceans. Tupuanuku and Tupuarangi look after our kai that grow below and above the land, our veggie gardens and all that live within our trees and the sky. Waipunarangi and Ururangi are the weather stars, guardians of the rain and wind. And the final two stars are our protectors, Pohutsukawa and Hiwaiterangi. One protects the memories of our loved ones who have passed away, while the other protects our wishes. This 
as the Matariki Fano. If Matariki has such a long history, why are a lot of us only learning about Matariki now? The reason why people uh, don't know much about it is simply because when you've got different symbols around the country, recognising and remembering a dying race, that encourages us to be embarrassed of who we are and our culture. And as a result of that, you lose knowledge. I was raised in the 80s when there was a slow revival of the culture. It's taken a good 40 years of renaissance just to get here. And all of the hard work of the last 40 years has enabled us to start to be proud again. Hede Hakatauanaka <laughs> E kore tai e te au pūtai au pākeha te tiro tiro ne. Te mātauranga te Māori e honoanga me o te rangi, te whenua ki te moana. E haka hoki ana hoki e mātau e tahi o ngā hakoranga nei. E hea hai, kia tupu mai wa tātou nei moho puna, wa tātou nei tamariki, hea mōhio ki te tiro tiro i te tai au ne. Whanga i tia te māramatanga ki Ngāuri, Matariki rises in midwinter, a time of seasonal change. It's cold, so the land is at its most unproductive and the harvest season must end. What more does this star cluster tell us at this time of year? Traditionally, all of our New Year's were in winter because the, the moment that things get warm, we're then moving into work. And so summer is our biggest time to work because you go out and get all of the food that you need to get while you then rest in the winter. You stay home during the winter, you go all around the world, all the big battles around the world. Very rarely were they in winter, and if they were, the people who went to attack would often lose. You don't hear any stories of our tūpuna going into big battles in winter simply because it makes sense to stay home. Ngāti Rangi have come home to learn about ancient traditions and how they can celebrate their new year. Winter is a time for scholarship. It's a time to stay together, to reflect, to wānanga. I live a long way away from home and it's, it's hard sometimes being away, but coming home is really grounding. It's just a really warm home feeling. And I know that when I have a baby and they're brought up here, they're like, this is the Māori New Year, this is, it's normalised, you know, we don't have to fight for it or we don't have to explain our own culture. It's just a part of this land now, as it should have been from the beginning. Māori would look to the stars to predict the upcoming year's harvest. If the stars in the cluster are clear and bright, it would be a warm and bountiful season. However, if Matariki appeared hazy, this would be a sign of a cold and difficult season. 
or if certain stars were shining brighter than others, like if Tupuanuku was shining the brightest, then you'd know that you would have a successful kumara harvest. There's a lot of revival happening right now of old knowledge. Traditionally, each season had a reason. Our culture's a food culture. That's just an aspect of humanity, is the importance of food. Autumn was preparation for the cold months. Winter was all about wānanga. Then you go into spring, and that then tells you, start to prepare your garden for the kumara. I've been doing a bit of work with somebody who works um, for the Met Service. And so just aligning, oh, this is what I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a cold winter, and it's going to be short. And she goes, how do you know? And I says, oh, well, I was just reading the stars and what the stars were telling me. And that just gives me a really good read on what's going to happen for the next season as well as for the next year. But we all see different stars depending on where we live. All around the world, the landscape is different. The conditions are different. So naturally, you adapt to your conditions. The same applies here around Aotearoa. Every tribe is surrounded by a different environment. So every tribe has different traditions. Not all tribes see Matariki as a sign of the new year. This may be because in their environment, they can't see Matariki and other stars are more prominent. Puanga, also known as Rigel, is a star that many Māori see as a sign of the new year. It's higher and much brighter than Matariki, and it rises around the same time too. Puanga is celebrated all around Aotearoa, but mainly on the west coast, far north, parts of the South Island and the Chathams. Some signs were read differently, but most tribes knew of both Matariki and Puanga. Some people say, oh no, we're Puanga, oh no, we're Matariki. What's really important from my perspective is there's no competition. You read whatever you read, depending on where you are. Puanga is a, a key star for us of the west coast coming into the central volcanoes. And she's important simply because we get a better read from her than we do from Matariki. Traditionally, in the mountain here, to prepare for the cold months, we would go down to the Whanganui River where it's slightly warmer. And so because we were down the river, you can't see Matariki and you can only see Puanga. Traditionally, Māori New Year celebrations included ritual fires, offerings, farewelling the dead, celebrating life and preparing for the future. Ngāti Rangi have revived their traditional New Year's celebration. Um, I lost my mum a while ago. And it's uh, time to celebrate who they are through who we are and to let go, but to still remember. Because if you don't talk about them, you lose them. And that's what the fire, and that's about. And that's why when we reflect on Waiata and Karakia, you feel their presence in it. I'm not normally a spiritual person, but I have never really experienced anything like that. It was something really special, I'll, something I'll definitely never forget. 
This is my first time being on a marae. I feel extremely privileged. It's so much more than reading about it in a book or on a website. As a scientist, Western science has a lot to learn from Indigenous knowledge. A lot of this knowledge has been here for a long time. It's just maybe been slightly ignored by Western science, you know, and coming from science and as a Westerner, that's, you know, I think that's quite significant. Huanga is a part of our journey. It's a part of a new beginning. Matariki allows us to share who we are, our stories, from our point of view. We're telling our story, not someone else telling it for us. Us here in Aotearoa typically associate New Year's celebrations with toasting glasses, parties, countdowns and fireworks. But have we ever really stopped to ask why we celebrate this way? Or do we just accept the fact that this is the way we've always done it? And when did we stop knowing the meaning behind these traditional celebrations? Over the past couple of decades, Matariki celebrations have been revived as a time of remembrance, joy and peace. So how can we celebrate Matariki today? Matariki allows me to grieve my past, to set intentions for what is to come, and to acknowledge my surroundings of te ao Māori. I went to Awananga, the way they spoke about star navigation, that really sparked my love for Matariki and how to incorporate it through my lifestyle. From that day forward, it was like the best, it was better than the Beyonce concert, like it was amazing. Um, and I was looking around in the room and I was like, why am I the only young person here? Traditionally, Māori needed to observe and understand their environment for survival. A tupuna. They relied on matariki as signs of how to get their kai. My dream is for kids to walk outside and understand the natural notifications in our environment. And understanding that, you can know so much more about yourself. I'm not an expert, but I'm just a messenger stick to my peers on the cool as things we have in Tiao Māori. Hana is trying to modernise Māori traditions to help her generation to understand how the lunar phases can affect our behaviour. We're all just teenagers trying to find our way in life in this 21st century and it can get a bit emotionally high and emotionally low and I was just trying to help them navigate through those different cycles from a Māori perspective. I created one of these resources to understand Maramataka, which is the Māori lunar calendar, and hope to help them navigate through their mental well-being, their spiritual well-being, and their physical well-being according to the Maramataka phases. For instance, one of our moon phases is Rākau Nui, and in this flip chart book we've got Our Moon is Full, a great time to outgrow comfortable places. Matariki is not just a Māori thing. A lot of different cultures celebrate Matariki in their own way, in their own tikanga. My uncle and auntie were the initiators to start celebrating Matariki a few years back. And our first Matariki we had was literally just roasting marshmallows by the fire and we were talking about different variations of matariki. The wairua of that night, you can't compare it and I can't explain it. It's just very special, very warming and that's what matariki is about. So to me in my eyes, if you can have your family together, if you can have really nice kai and a celebration of our whakapapa and hitori, 
that's Matariki to me. To be honest, I don't really know that much about Matariki. I'm half Tongan, half Scottish. I feel like everyone should learn about Matariki, you know? Because it's like part of New Zealand, get a, a better understanding about it, not just like learning it, but understanding it fully, yeah. Does anyone have any knowledge or understanding around Matariki? There's one interpretation that Tafari Matia, who is the god of wind, took out his eyes because of the love of his parents, and his eyes were scattered across the sky, which created Matariki. Matariki being a um, public holiday now is just a way of revitalising um, not only the reo, but just the customs, the tikanga, and um, all of that, and not only just for Māori, but for those who aren't Māori who live in New Zealand, and just to kind of make them aware of um, just like the culture as well as the people of the land, so yeah. Does anyone have any idea of how they can celebrate Matariki? Yes. Yeah? You can celebrate it by eating some food. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One form of celebrating Matariki or a traditional way is called a haitapu. Haitapu in one sense is Throughout the year, you're carrying like an invisible bag. And throughout that year, you're filling it up with baggage. Knowledge, experience, negative, positive. By the time you get to Matariki, it's so heavy. <laughs> it's weighing you down. So Haitapu allows you to empty your baggage out. And you're ready to start your new year, OK? My favourite memory with my grandfather was uh, how do I put this nice? He was quite a big fella. And um, I think the one thing that I used to like was just like, I mean, you see him, just give him like the good old hug. Like since he's like big fella, it was just like, felt real embracing. Yeah. So probably one of my favorite memory of um, my, me and my grandfather. In terms of sitting with my beliefs, it doesn't really correlate. But that's fine, you know, you, you can always learn new things. So how we would celebrate a haitapu is we would open the space with the karakia. And then we acknowledge by saying the names of people that have passed away in that year. And then we karakia to the different fitu or stars. And in this instance, we will place down an offering that is associated with each star. And so we would place these on our bonfire, right? And the steam from here going up there is saying thank you to the stars for guiding us for the year. And then we karakia, we set our intentions, goals and aspirations to Hiwai Te Rangi. Matariki is a time to let everything go, to stop and reflect on the last year that you've had all of the ups, all of the downs, and just let everything go and acknowledge everything so that you can fill in even more life experience in the next year. Matariki can help bring our country together so that we can enjoy the best of both worlds.